everyone. Welcome to Banff. I'm your host for today, Alice Pang, Lala Twiddle on the boards. Sorry, Mike couldn't be with us today because the Tooth Fairy Guild summoned him to duty. And so he's currently getting fitted for his wings and his wand. Today, we'll be talking about Aberrant's new edition for Trinity Continuum uh, by Onyx Publishing. And joining our panel today is Steve Kenson, Mr. Superhero Writer Extraordinaire. Okay. Glad to be here. Hello. <laughs> Wait, um, on that one. <laughs> Nick Garber, CEO of Apogee Comics. How are you How doing, you Nick? Good. How is everyone? Good. And Brandon Powers, our Banff mascot. Not to be. Uh, <laughs> this became official recently. Oh. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Creator of nickname. Don't do drugs, kids. Yes. Or I'll come and bite you. So, there's from your our mascot. favorite dog, Ragnarok. Yep, and we may have a late uh, late joining of Ian Watson from Onyx Publishing, so hopefully he makes it on. So Brandon, why don't you start us off? Sure, the first and most important question that I have is, is it aberrant or is it aberrant? Because I hear it both ways, and I'm not certain if one is just pretentious douche watery or if that is the way I'm supposed to be um, saying it. No, but I'm coining that phrase, douche, douche watery. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I think it's a tomato tomato thing. I've always said aberrant, um, but I don't know that either one is necessarily incorrect. All right. So the the real thing that I want to do, uh, I unfortunately never played aberrant. You know, I was poor because White Wolf was taking all my money on their other books. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so a game that was not in the world of darkness, I, I simply did not have the coin for. So can we start with first edition and just get kind of a, a peek into the world? And mm -hmm. so therefore we have some basis on what's changed as we, for, we go to second. And for uh, our audience as well, too, not um, just for. So, um, so very briefly, um, Aberrant is a near future setting uh, in the Trinity continuum uh, where uh, a small uh, segment of the, the population develops superpowers. And uh, what happens to the world um, that follows, basically. Um, the, the game is set uh, about 10 years after uh, what's referred to as end day, which is uh, when the Novas, the people with superpowers, first appear, and what the world like looks like after that. Uh, it's a, a fairly um, cinematic uh, take on, you know, what would the world be like if people with superpowers existed? Did Did you say that the event is called M Day? N Day, like oh, okay. the Novas. Because I was going to wonder if Marvel needed to pay you guys a lot of money to use that. <laughs> so, and everyone. Um, Ian Watson has joined us. Ian joins us directly from Onyx Publishing as their representative. Welcome, Ian. Glad you got over the internet hiccup. I'm Alice. Sorry, I'm late. Oh, no problem. I'm Alice, your host for today. Mike couldn't make it. Uh, and uh, other than Steve, we have Nick Garber. Say hi, please, Nick. So Hello. Nice. And we have Brandon with us. A wizard is never late. He arrives precisely when he means to, Ian. Yes. <laughs> Even if that's so, 17 minutes later than everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's stylishly, you know, that that's a stylish entrance that you're making. Right. So, and thank you. Steve was just telling everyone about a bit about the world so that we can understand what changes will be, uh, we can expect from the first edition to the second edition. Uh, did you have anything else you wanted to tell us about it, Steve? Well, like the different factions, for example? Yeah, White Wolf's no, can... notorious for factions. I can certainly go into factions. Um, factions are, are fairly important in uh, the Trinity Continuum and in the story path system because paths uh, are a big factor that define uh, who characters are. Um, and uh, so one of the, the paths uh, that defines uh, characters in Aberrant is uh, particularly which you know, group or faction they're, they're aligned with. Um, and uh, the, the major uh, factions in the setting, real briefly, um, are um, Project Utopia uh, and their Team Tomorrow, which is uh, a worldwide charitable nonprofit organization that essentially is looking to harness the power of all of these people with superpowers in order to save and improve the world. Um, the Terrigen is, is a philosophical 
movement uh, that is devoted to the idea that the novas uh, are sovereign and independent beings whose primary responsibility is to explore the depths of their newfound power uh, and evolve themselves into their sort of highest expression of uh, that potential. The directive is an international uh, organization working for the United Nations uh, whose uh, job is essentially to act as oversight uh, for all of these new people with superpowers. Um, and uh, they have the, the you know, unenviable job of you know, basically enforcing the law on you know, people who can lift tanks and things like that. Um, uh, factions. Uh, the Daedalus League is a, a, a favorite of mine. Uh, they're a group of novas and allies uh, who have various capabilities that make them capable of exploring space. Um, and they've decided, hey, since we can fly and teleport through outer space, uh, why don't we go and start seeing what's out there? Um, and uh, so they, uh, you know, have created a whole new space race and uh, you know, a whole new boon of exploration to be able to start going and seeing what's there. Um, cool. And um, I think instead of hit on the big ones, what am I leaving out, Ian? Um, team Tonight. Oh, the, oh, team mention? Tonight, the elites. Mm -hmm. So Ian, I have a question for you. From my understanding, unlike a lot of superhero games where you get to build uh, different power sets put together, so if I want to fly and I want to do this other, uh, do a different power, uh, it doesn't work that way in Trinity Continuum because you're dealing with quantum energy and it's all on the subconscious level, so everything's thematic, right? So if you say, basically, I am a person of nature, your powers are going to be, I can walk through trees or I can turn into, or, or I can act, change my hand into um, a, a tree branch, but you won't be able to access fire or anything like that. Is that correct? Sort of. Uh, any Nova is theoretically capable of doing anything. They're just sort of limited by their own psychological blocks. Mm -hmm. So the powers you, f you develop when you first become a Nova, when you erupt, as they say, uh, tend to be related to the reason why you erupted. So, for example, uh, the the first known Nova, uh, Randall Portman, the fireman, uh, he he was at he was a, a firefighter at like a five alarm blaze, and he absorbed all that fire into himself. So that's sort of like his one main power, the the energy absorption. But theoretically, uh, maybe he could learn to do something uh, not entirely unlike uh, Iron Man's repulsor blasts, where you know, he's redirecting that energy to shoot it out, or he can use it to fly. Uh, so everything sort of branches out of the, the one sort of thematic reason why you erupted. But there's no reason why you can't have a nature-based um, Nova being able to fly or do whatever. It's just a matter of how they can sort of rationalize it to themselves. In a, in a thematic sense. Cool. And but, so is it, do you buy uh, skills and abilities uh, on the dot system similarly to how you do in a lot of other White Wolf games for people who have played a lot of White Wolf games maybe and not necessarily played Aberrant or it, or is it going to have significant differences? Um, it's similar to first edition in that there are different levels of powers, but I don't think we rated them uh, in terms of dots. Um, we did with the mega attributes because everyone mm -hmm. expects attributes to be mm -hmm. rated in terms yeah. of dots. Yeah. So the mega attributes follow that. But otherwise, it's just mm -hmm. like, okay, here is a level three power. Here is a power that goes from four to six or whatever. Cool. Yeah. Um, well, so what are nothing... some of the changes from uh, first edition to second edition? Yikes, that's a long list. <laughs> See? <laughs> well, what about what about the big changes? Yeah, big the, the changes. highlight changes. Uh, why okay, why are we going changes. to the second edition? Yeah. Other well, than it's been, I think, 20 years. Well, I was going to say, right, the big number yes. one reason would be like it's, it's been like 20 years. And, um, you know, the. The original uh, Aberrant was was very much a game of the 90s, you know, in that regard, uh, both in its tone and in its design. Um, and since uh, Onyx Path, um, 
you know, has their new story path system. Um, obviously, on the game design side of things, you know, it's it's bringing Aberrant in line with the innovations in in story path um, and how that system works. And in terms of setting, it's bringing Aberrant up to date. I mean, the original Aberrant game was set in the near future of you know two thousand eight. So, you know, um, it would be a, a, a little weird to, you know, do a near future game that's, you know, set 11 years ago at this point. Yeah, totally get that because, and I'm certain some of the countries that uh, are involved in the directive might have gotten changed out and yep. little tweaks like that because I, I think that some of the uh, governments listed in that would no longer fit in the world that uh, in our near future. Yeah, culture and geopolitics and, and just, you know, sort of our relationship with superheroes as a genre have all changed. Yes. So, Nick, a lot in the as last some, 20 years. Oh, sorry, Steve, you, you lagged up and I thought you, were, you stopped oh. talking. Sorry. Uh, sorry Nick, that. as someone who's never heard of this game before we dragged you in, in here, do you have any questions on anything you want to know to sell you on this game? No, when are we playing? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's a good question. Um, Ian, why don't you tell us a little bit about your current Kickstarter up so that Nick can go and spend oh, more money. We already spent account. ours. <laughs> well, we currently have the Kickstarter running for uh, Trinity Continuum Aberrant. Um, it it does require the Trinity Continuum core rulebook, which is in the final stages of production right now. Uh, you can add that as part of the Kickstarter, and it should be available in a couple of months for uh, public purchase. Um, and yeah, it's, it's all the good stuff of the brand new edition of Aberrant and, um, we've, uh, hit something like, I don't know, like a dozen stretch goals already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we're at about, we're at, at about at the halfway mark. We hit the halfway mark on Tuesday and we still have, um, we're, we're at about 225% funded thereabouts. So we're doing pretty well and, uh, we, we hope to be doing even better by the time we're done. Cool. What are some uh, different levels that they can purchase? Uh, the the base level is just sort of um, anyone who's a backer gets to check out the manuscript. So you can you can see the book uh, in in discrete chunks as we proceed through the Kickstarter. So if you see something you like, maybe up your pledge. If you if you don't like what you see, then you can back out, and that's fine. Um, and uh, so, so the very basic level is just, you know, throw in a buck or five just so you can have a look at the manuscript. Uh, up from that is the PDF level, uh, where you'll get a PDF once we're done. And up from that is a print-on-demand version. And up from that is the traditionally printed version, which is like the POD, but fancier. It's, uh, it's higher quality paper, higher quality binding. That's the version that will show up in in uh, your local game stores. Awesome. And for people who uh, are needing to look that up, that is once again Aberrant for the Trinity Continuum to look up on Kickstarter, A-B-E-R-R-A-N-T. Um, AKA Nick is already like typing away, I see. <laughs> looking yeah, that. you already got 55 bucks of my money, so. Uh, <laughs> there thank you. you go. You're welcome. Appreciate it. So uh, what's... um. Can you guys tell us a little bit about what makes the uh, the Trinity Continuum uh, setting? I know that, or not setting, but uh, system. I know that people can look at some of the other games that you guys have done so far. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. the, the the Trinity Continuum is, uh, the core rulebook is sort of a modern day action adventure sort of setting. Uh, the character types are called talents, which are people with an extraordinary degree of skill or luck. So if you want to play the Born Identity, or you want to play Leverage, or you want to play Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., you can play all those sorts of things with the core rulebook. Uh, and then um, the Aeon setting uh, builds on top of that. That's playing Scions in a uh, science fiction uh, thing in uh, the 2120s. And then we have Aberrant, which is going to be our supers game in the 2020s. And hopefully uh, this time next year or thereabouts, we'll be doing Adventure with an exclamation point, which is a pulp game set in the 1920s. And that was an old uh, D6 uh, product of uh, White Wolves, wasn't it? No, Adventure. it was D10. 
It was D10? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So for yeah. Scion, I'm actually very curious because we used to play the old Scion that actually resided in the White Wolf world. What differences would you say? Because that's actually also a very super heroic uh, setting and engine if people end up wanting to play that. Uh, if it's the same or same or similar Scion to the White Wolf one. I think we're confusing... Uh, the Second edition of Scion, which we recently released. Mm. Yeah, uh, Scion, uh, the Scion that we released, S-C-I-O-N, uh, not P-S-I-O-N. Okay, <laughs> different, yeah, because yeah. I was like, I heard Scion, I'm like, did you guys just decide to transport it? Because at that point, yeah. I, okay, yeah, I was yeah. like, I missed the announcement somewhere. I swear in, I missed the announcement. In 2007, uh, White Wolf did release Scion, S-C-I-O-N, which mm -hmm. is uh, a game where you play the Children of the Gods. Children of Gods, yep. Uh, and uh, we have done a second edition of that with the Story Path system. Uh, that came out uh, last month, I think. So that, yeah. that is available for purchase. We picked uh, that, that up using, already. <laughs> good. That is using the, the same system as um, as the Trinity Continuum. Cool. Um, the, the Scions from the Aeon setting are PSIONs, they're, they're people who use mental powers to oh, okay. do various well, so things. There's still a little connection there yeah. between superheroes and that. Cool. This this yeah. reminds yeah. me of a, of a game. Uh, we were sitting down, we were going to play D&D, and our friend Paul says, I want to play a Scion, meaning PS... Uh, no, no, meaning S-C-I-O-N, is <laughs> in a Scion of a household or something, and mm -hmm. he always was talking about the Scionic Handbook, and I want to play that, and one of our other friends goes, damn it, Paul, you always want to play a Scion, thinking that he was talking about the class. <laughs> well, Common English, confusion with these words. The English language is strange sometimes, two very different meanings for, with the same word. Yeah. So, well, that's really cool. I'm really looking forward to seeing what comes out of Aberrant. Does anybody else have any questions, comments, or anything uh, else? What's, what, to both of you, uh, what is your favorite part of this second edition that makes you think that people need to jump up and go grab it right now, 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 now? Oh, that's true. That's a good question. Um, my favorite parts of, of the second edition of Aberrant are just the range of options that the, the game opens up. My favorite thing about I ran along aberrant game and my favorite thing about aberrant as a setting is that it is although it is super heroic and it features characters with superpowers um, aberrant takes a, a step away from a lot of the traditional comic book approach to things where comic book superheroes are primarily there to enforce the status quo um, they're the, the ones who are, who are there to stop the villains from doing whatever it is they're doing and just kind of keep things the way they are. Whereas the protagonists and Aberrant are handed all of this tremendous power and basically said, so you can fix whatever you think is wrong with the world, go. And uh, it, it results in a lot of really interesting stories um, when the characters are entrusted with that kind of power and then give given kind of options because it is both super easy and super difficult to change the world <laughs> in a lot of ways and it's it's it really creates some interesting stories that are different from your usual sort of four color comic book crime fighter fair gotcha does that mean that you think that it would be like a good place to run a campaign uh similar to the boys yeah, if you were you were inclined to go with that kind of thing, um, then yeah, you could definitely do that. Cool. And Ian, um, I like like Aberrin does a, a lot of things differently than a lot of other superhero settings. I like that it does sort of superheroes as celebrity culture, where mm. each superhero becomes not just a celebrity, but almost like the center of a cult, almost. Um, just because, like, it, it's your instant ticket to stardom. Mm -hmm. um, it, it doesn't matter how, like, you only had a dozen people following you on, on Twitter or Instagram beforehand. As soon as people find out you're a Nova, that's going to explode into the millions. Uh, and that is a lot of responsibility to have. Like, not just sort of in the Spider-Man sense, but 
people are going to be scrutinizing every single thing you do, just like a celebrity. Uh, yeah. you, you can't have a moment's peace. Like people are going to be, you know, following you everywhere, taking pictures everywhere. You'll, Criticizing you'll have, your hairstyle you know, your... for the day. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that like, what are you going to do with that kind of power? Mm -hmm. When uh, the, the tagline for first edition is what would you do with the power of a God? And that's not just talking about like being able to, you know, shoot fire out of your ass. That's, that's also talking about, you know, sort of that, that social cachet where you have all these people who are willing to follow you to the ends of the earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually have one more question. For a lot of the White Wolf games, there's a very heavy buy-in on theology and mythos. And I would assume that for the for this game, it would be very similar. So can, um, can you tell us a little bit about the feel of what people should expect when they read and want to run one of these games? The, the general environmental feel and energy of what would be there, what kind of theology and mythos influences? Well, I'd say that, I would you know, say uh, that... for Aberrant specifically, first edition. Go ahead, Steve. No, it's all right. Uh, well, the, you know, in many ways, the mythos of of Aberrant is the comic books. You know, it's it's superheroes and celebrity culture, and um, that both you know works for and against uh, the the Novas um, because, in some regards, they're not comic book superheroes. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, a, a lot of the expectations that people place on them, you know, to be comic book superheroes is, is challenging. Um, you know, so there's, there's definitely that. And I think that the, the sort of transhumanist ethos of, of Teros, the, the philosophy of the Terrigen plays a lot of a role in the game because there's a lot of questions that arise in terms of how much can you change who you are as a as a being in terms of your capabilities and still be human? Mm -hmm. Psychologically and physically. Yes, yeah, psychologically and physically. Because and speaking, oh, go ahead, Alice. No, go ahead, Brandon. Speaking of that, you guys have kind of a a um, you know, in Vampire, you, there was that path of humanity or whatever, and if you hit a ten, which was basically impossible, you transcended out. But in this game, you guys have kind of a, a power limit built in that as you continue to uh, become your power, you you move beyond just being human. And eventually, which I assume would be very hard, your character has basically become something beyond and therefore moves out of being a player character, right? Yeah, yep. I saw that yeah. you can, as you, as you gain certain points in it, you you know, you can grow a tentacle out of your chest or uh, other things and you start looking weird and scary to people. I thought that was interesting. And it's kind of, it reminded me kind of like um, a, like Mordheim or some weird West games where you're like, please don't roll that, please don't roll that when you're leveling. <laughs> I want to stay in character just a little longer. Don't give me a tentacle on my chest. Well, so the, the Terrigen do have uh, a system called chrysalis where just like um a, a caterpillar sort of dissolving themselves and remaking themselves into a butterfly um the the terrigen literally rebuild themselves so you can sort of choose it, like as they're growing in human they can choose what form that will take mm -hmm. so you're not going to necessarily get random mutations you're going to, going to pick and choose what what you look like what, who you are Cool. And how does that uh, that mechanic work? Not necessarily the the specific mechanic of it, but the the story, as as you do uh, basically transcend out of being a, a player character. Well, essentially, you know, as um, Novas gain more and more power, um, they uh, become more and more connected to the really the fundamental forces of the of the universe. Uh, like Ian was saying, the limits on Nova's power is really pretty much the limits they've imposed on the battle. And oh, Steve's starting to break uh -oh. up a little bit. Steve's currently in a thunders and lightning storm, so if he uh, breaks up a bit, I it's all yours, Ian. You have to cover. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
What? Well, yeah, the the powers that a, a Nova has are, are mostly self-imposed blocks. So, um, as as they increase in in their their transcendence score, um, their their inhumanity, they're also sort of in a sense busting through some of those blocks because their psychology is different. Um, so as they reach their their transcendence score of ten, at that point, something happens. Maybe they just sort of disperse themselves into the quantum energy that makes up the universe. Maybe they find themselves a new universe. Something happens. They're just not here anymore. Cool. So, that and... makes me think that Han Solo would be a terrifying um, uh, Nova because of his famous <laughs> line. I don't know. I can imagine a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Actually, it makes me think that you could totally run a Matrix game like this. They made it out of the Matrix. <laughs> Yeah, the, the way that he was describing the, you know, they, they move on, it, it reminded me actually of two things. One was uh, season two of True Blood, where the the uh, the vampire um, out in Texas, I think it was, basically is trying to achieve Golconda from Vampire the Masquerade. The other thing was uh, Dr. Manhattan in, uh, in Watchmen, mm -hmm. and how he's no longer really concerned with, uh, with the effects <laughs> of things on the mortal world. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, Doctor Manhattan is, is a good example of uh, a Nova with higher transcendence. Which you know, at that point, you're not really interacting on a level where you're a great PC at that point. Right. Now, cool. can I take uh, take my aberrant characters and uh, you know put some chocolate in the peanut butter and uh, grab some Scion characters of PSION as well as maybe some Scion characters of SCION? And just uh, go to town, old uh, World of Darkness style of mixing everything together. Uh, and Aeon. If you want to, yeah, if you want to use uh, the rules for PSION Scions from Aeon, uh, the system is fully compatible. We expect to some degree that people will be doing that. Uh, there, there are a couple of sidebars specifically for that sort of thing. Oh, very uh, cool. But uh, SCION. The systems, they they don't exactly match up. I mean, okay. It, it, okay. they both run off story path, but it's sort of different incarnations of story path. So you could probably do it, but it's going to take some work on your part. Cool. That's this game sounds really interesting. Looking very forward to yeah. it. Yeah. Do we have any other questions or comments before we want to close up? What about art? What yes, about that? That's always something. That, <laughs> yes, there will be art. Oh, that's yes. Do, do you have guys art. have anybody, uh, you know, working on it? And, or is that uh, you guys are still getting all your contracts laid out on who's doing the art for you? The art on Kickstarter is awesome, some, by the way. Yeah, we have some pieces uh, finished, which we got done in time for the Kickstarter. Um, you can see some of that now by, by heading to the Kickstarter page. But that's not the all of the art for the game, and uh, I think we just hit a stretch goal where we're getting a bump to the the art budget. So that means even more art on top Ooh. of that. So uh, I am not the art director, so I cannot tell you which artists we are and aren't using. Uh, but I I can say that I really like that the art that we have so far. Mm. That's cool. awesome. Um, uh, I really I totally liked lost the, my question. I really liked uh, the piece by uh, um, Michael Montanet. I hope I said the name right, but the piece where the woman has the boy in her hands, uh, in her arms, because mm -hmm. she's in a very classic superhero costume, but she's not overdone up here or down there or pin up -y. So it's actually, and the facial expression is just awesome because you can totally see that rage, that scream. So I really like that piece. I look forward to seeing Thank more you. art that you guys will have. So do I. <laughs> well, well I, I've gotten a, a good sampling. I would love to uh, see some more. We'd love to do a live play for of the, the system to give people a feel for that. If you guys had uh, enough for us to do that. Yeah, we would love point. to do that. By the time the Kickstarter is done, uh, the the entire manuscript should be previewed. Now it is like a pre-edit version of the manuscript, and there's still some play testing to be done. Mm -hmm. But what's up there should be fully playable. Awesome. 
Well, thank you both for joining us for the kick, uh, for this interview. Uh, did anybody else have any last last comments before we hit the green button or red button? Thanks uh, for thank you on. much. Like uh, like Alice was saying, thank you much for joining us. It's uh, great to hear some more about the setting. I always felt bad that I didn't get involved in the old aberrant since I'm a, a huge superhero geek. And, and I'm a looking huge white forward. Wolf geek. Yep, I'm looking forward to to seeing it and uh, taking it, trying to knock some wheels off with it. Well, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, please join us on our uh, Discord at uh, discord.me slash Banff Podcast. Also, don't forget to join us on the new newly launched BWK Babies with Knives Discord, which is at discord.me slash BWK. And look for our YouTube channel because we already have four systems of actual plays up and are constantly adding more. Also, so, what yes. else, uh, the Kickstarter page, where else should people go and oh, look yes. for information about, uh, about Aberrant? I was just about to say plug that, but... Uh, outside of the Kickstarter page, uh, people can head to the Onyx Path website, which is theonyxpath.com, uh, or our Facebook page is facebook.com slash theonyxpath, or more specifically, uh, if you want to dig into uh, the Trinity Continuum game line, facebook.com slash Trinity Continuum. Awesome. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day.